Good afternoon. Hi, Facebook and YouTube and everything else. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. God, Naomi, because here's Naomi. Every okay, so listen, she is fantastic and she keeps a lot of us focused. Um, so she always, before we go to do one of these, she goes, okay, what are you going to say? You're not going to say Facebook, right? And then she said, hi, Facebook. <laughs> so anyways, um, that's okay. These things happen. Um, so we're a little late today, which is unlike us. Sorry, we have been crazy. We were doing a photo shoot. We, yeah, we were having a little. <laughs> that's why we were so <laughs> I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> But yes, I'm single text. It's okay. <laughs> I'll stop talking. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, we did uh, did some updated photos and we had a little bit of fun for a little bit um, right before this, and then we stuffed some food in our face, so we weren't hangry. That is a thing. It is a thing. For it's a thing. It's a thing. For, yeah. <laughs> unless you're James Reed, and then you decide that it's not a thing. Yeah. Unless you're some people from the Upper Northwest, they don't think that that's a thing. But it's a thing here. I think we should shout out to Jason Hudson, by the way, with yeah. Hudson oh, yes. Photography. Yes. He does all of our headshots, yeah. and he's amazing. He puts up with so much. <laughs> we well, that's a plug. That's a plug. Yeah, that's a plug. Shout yeah. out. But thanks. So thanks, Jason. You're awesome. If we're going to give shout outs, um, we should give. Oh, what yeah, we'll see you tonight. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. United Georges. But I think if while we're giving shout outs, we have to give a shout out to our main because anybody that knows E.J. Johnson oh, was like, oh my <laughs> knows that he um, he likes to say he has a face for radio. He does, <laughs> all the time. So um, he indulged all of us today and came and had a little fun with us. And he even did a little, little pearl snap change. Just for so, us. Just for us. So thank you, DJ. I don't know if you're here or if you're going to be able to hang out with us during um, our Thursday coffee corner, but we're thinking about you and thank you very much. If you see us like glancing really close, with your eyes. Say Todd are, I think so. Hey, Todd. Lee. Well, I feel like I need to be sitting on some phone books. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get her to <laughs> We'll get on topic eventually, so it's okay. Um, topic, very good. Segway. And we see lots of squirrels. <laughs> um, today, well, we've been talking for the last few weeks about working with buyers and the process. And last week, we talked about your professional inspection. I really feel short. The <laughs> more <laughs> she talks now, she's like, big tall box. I know. Oh, I like you. Um, so last week we spoke about the professional inspection and mm -hmm. we shared some of uh, our uh, adventures, um, experiences, process, and all the above. And the importance of getting a home inspection. And the importance. Um, again, we have a blog about professional inspections in Arkansas is one of the only states where inspectors have to be licensed. So and there's a minimum. They have to meet for their training to get licensed and regulated. Yes, thank you, Naomi. So, shout out to Arkansas. Um, so today, so we got through the inspection period. Yay, high fives. High five to our buyer, too. Um, and high five to the seller. Like, that's a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. So we all kind of like our shoulders are going to come down a little bit. Mine are still up. Yeah, Alex, you're still up. Mine are still up. Remember, Alexander is working on her first deal um, as a realtor. She's doing fantastic. She is doing fantastic. And um, yeah, they're still working through things. They're still dating. Everything's going to be fine. It's going to be cool. But uh, so now we always say, okay, the next thing that the next item on the list is the appraisal. Mm -hmm. So, and then once we get through that, it's really just smooth sailing. Buyer, then, then we just want to keep reminding our buyer, as we do often, don't buy anything. Mm -hmm. yes. Don't buy anything. Don't take out any type of credit. Don't do anything without talking yeah. to your lender. Yes. yes. Talk to yes. your lender about everything before you do it. 
Mm-hmm. Yes, you can go to the grocery store, but don't put it on your credit card. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're, we're laughing, but seriously, um, mm-hmm. check with your lender before you do anything. Wait to buy furniture until after you have clothes yes. or a new car or whatever it is. Go on a vacation. So, buy your house first. Yeah, buy your house first. It's one part at a time. Yeah. Um, we had Lindsay Camp. She was here with Highlands Mortgage talking to us about those things specifically. Um, so the appraisal. So I always tell my seller, okay, the appraisal is going to happen, and they say, well, how's that going to happen? Mm-hmm. So the appraiser is going to make an appointment, and he's going to do that through. We use the Showing Time app. I don't know. I don't know if there's any other apps. I don't think there. all the all the. Yeah. I don't think all the agents use it. Well, I know that. Yeah, yeah I know that. We wish that they'd all used it. But I don't know if there's another uh, vehicle that people or companies use. But we use Showing Time, and appraisers will schedule their inspection. The seller gets a request for that appraisal, and uh, they will approve it. Hopefully, just boom. So do they get to choose? The appraiser who comes out? No. Nobody chooses that. Not the seller, not the buyer, not the lender, not me, not you, nobody. Mm-hmm. Um, it's random. And, you know, it's very random. I think it's, I don't understand the system exactly, so I'm not going to, I can't speak it super intelligently about it, but um, it's not that they put everyone's name in a fishbowl and draw, but it is random. So we won't know who that person is going to be until we see that um, request for the appraisal. And it gets approved, and the appraiser will come out and do his thing. Uh, Nobody really needs to be there. He can access the home via the the lockbox, right? They have Mm -hmm. a CBS code just like inspectors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't give them the CBS code, though. They have 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 their own time key. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't have to do anything. It's... Easy breezy. And the, um, I know that last week when we talked about inspectors, we told you that it could take anywhere from 34 hours for them to do their inspection. Yeah. Appraisers, maybe 30, 45 minutes? You maybe, know, they, blo- they know. usually block out about an hour, yeah. but I spoke to one appraiser this morning and I asked him how much time he would need. And he said to block out about an hour, but it might not take that long. And I think that the reason they block out that hour because they have multiple appointments, kind of like realtors, mm-hmm. we will, or I do rather, speak to my own experience. When I'm scheduling an appointment, I also walk mm-hmm. an hour. And that is because we may spend more time on the first appointment or mm-hmm. we may be running behind and that gives us yeah. some leeway. So I think that's probably why appraisers yeah. do that mm-hmm. too, right? So they're gonna come in and look through your home. So you'd want it to be in show ready um, order. That's my advice. But, and they're not doing an in-depth inspection like the inspectors are, right? No, no, no. It's no, no, very no. different. Yeah, it's different. Um, they're not going to spend three to four hours going through your house. Crawling through your crawl space. Yeah. They don't really yeah. care about the crawl space. They're not going to get yeah. that dirty. So they're coming and they're going to walk through and then they're collecting data and they're doing a lot of that through the MLS. Or so what's the, what's the goal of the appraiser? So they are going to assign a value. They have the contract, our contract that we've all agreed on. So they know what the sales price is, and then they're going out and doing their homework based on the comparables in the area around in which you live. All right, so that that appraisal is going to come back, and again, we are talking from the perspective of a buyer. So our buyer is going to be made aware from their lender, your appraisal's back, and it's, we want one of these, like, it's all good. Mm-hmm. And we as agents are not going to know what that number was. Mm-hmm. Not going to know. Oh, wow. And honestly, I have a lot of sellers because I work with uh, primarily sellers who will ask me because we will say, okay, the appraisal's back, everything is fine, everything came in at value. Well, what was it? I don't know. And it surprises people that we don't know that number and we don't. Um, that's not information that we're going to So then how do you know whenever it didn't come in? Like if you have a buyer and the house yeah. is under the value that you're purchasing the home for, I mean, what happens then? Interesting enough, then you know. 
Then you that's get, then you find out. out. That's the bulge information. Yeah, then you, you find out um, what the difference is and what you have to work towards. And so then becomes what would be, I guess, another negotiation. I don't guess. It's another negotiation. You gotta, you gotta work through it. So would you say that since it's another negotiation and there's a couple of negotiations throughout the whole yeah. negotiation, what part of the timeline does this fall on? Do you do it before the inspection, during the inspection? What's the ideal place to do this? That is such a good question because within our team, this is what, this is the standard in which we live by. We say to our buyer, or to the lender with our buyer, um, hey, could, what, what's, the, what's the appraisal? When is this supposed to be back? Um, when's it due back? And sometimes they can tell us, sometimes we can't. If we have some sort of idea that we've got some opportunities to work through, we might say, you know what, you might wait and just wait a couple days before you order that appraisal because that's an out-of-pocket expense to our buyer. Mm -hmm. And you, you don't get that money back once so it's done. What, would you, what are you waiting on before you do it? I, we're waiting on to just get through that inspection period. I think that's something new that I learned going through the process of this house is I was like, okay, when does this happen and why do we wait? Because that kind of happened with us. Our inspection period is honestly still going. And I was like, oh, so this needs to be moved here. And it's just like communicating with everyone to get us all on the same page so that it's the best scenario possible for your buyer. You're just like always putting them first, wouldn't you say? Uh, absolutely. And <clears throat> sometimes there's some lenders that buyers are working with and we learned this also, they prepay that appraisal fee. They pay that before, they pay that day one, they're under, they say to the lender, I'm under contract, and the, the lender is asking for that appraisal mm -hmm. amount, and they don't get it back. Um, <clears throat> so interesting, I, I haven't been up against that with local lenders, I could be wrong, maybe I just haven't worked with a lender that does that locally, but, um, this is a lender that I think is online. So, um, anyways, that was new for us. Um, oh, BJ is watching. Hi. Oh, I know that Marshall's watching too. Oh. So is Chris Sellers. Chris Sellers will see you tonight and Justin Callahan. Um, as you guys know, we all really like live music. Basically live at Georgia's, they do. Yeah, and tonight <laughs> Parker, Parker McCollum is going to be there. Um, so yeah, he's dreamy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen him before, so I'm kind of excited. I listened to a little bit of his music yesterday. You did? Mm -hmm. You like him? Yeah, he has that song with Co. Co. Mm -hmm. That's actually pretty good. Um, pretty chill. Pretty good. I love that song. It's called what? Yeah, I love, love something. It's, it's like a sad, song. slow it is. song. A little ballad. Yeah. yeah. Co leads on that song. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Co will be here in May if anyone's Co Wetzel fans. But no, okay, so shameless cool. plug for Georges. <laughs> um, so I had a question. Um, so when we um, where the appraisal? Well, we don't order, when the lender orders the appraisal. I know. Is that the song he sings with Co? I don't know. I don't think Ooh. that's it. What is oh, that they do sing that song together. Maybe I don't. Anyway, it's been a hell of a year. No, I don't think that's it. No, <laughs> maybe it is. Sorry. When you start talking, you we digress. Yeah. We digress. So when um, the the lender orders the appraisal, and um, we kind of talk to them, hey, you know, what's the order date of that? What's the due date yeah. of that? Mm -hmm. um, that way, it kind of gives us a little bit of a window for yeah. when the buyer can expect it. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, that's one thing that I learned with Alexander that you start doing with lenders. When I, because I'm the one who connects the title with the lender yep. at the beginning and I've started instead of just asking them hey has the appraisal been ordered I asked them what day like what's the date that you plan on ordering the uh, appraisal and then what's the if you've done that what's the due date to get that back and that's the window of when we can expect mm -hmm. that so once we have that window um, is there anything that the buyer should be worried about or do is there anything like inspections or anything like that, that they can do to get ready for that other than just you know, the appraisal the buyer yeah. the buyer yeah well, I don't think there's anything the buyer can do per se while we're waiting for the appraisal. Mm -hmm. Now the seller, you know, just like I, you know, I would be show ready. That's what I would do for sure. That's what I tell my sellers, just be show ready. 
Yeah, I mean, Naomi has a really good story. I think we shared this once before, but I think it's such a good story because <laughs> Naomi bought her first house. Oh, no, I forgot that we're going to tell this story. It's such a good story that there will never be a good story. mileage <laughs> taken from the story. Naomi, what would you, what, what was your experience So with um, your appraisal? So it came back good, and that was great. Um, <laughs> Start with the positive. With the positive. <laughs> We're going to focus on the fact that it came back good, and it was actually a surprise that it came back on value, for me at least. I don't think Paige had any worries because her handyman people are amazing. And the reason <laughs> why handyman people were involved is because, <laughs> is because that morning um, I was leaving actually to come to work, and um, in my car opened my garage. I started backing out, and I heard like my dog freaking out inside. So I jumped out of the car and ran inside. I thought I had put my car in park. <laughs> I didn't. And the next thing I knew, I turned around and my car was coming at me. <laughs> so I dove to the side towards my laundry room, and uh, my car <laughs> crashed into my door frame. <laughs> For my to the interior door of my house, and I mean, just thankfully, instead of like it didn't mess up any of the um, supportive beams or whatever. I obviously not the home builder in this group. Um, <laughs> any of the no, joists, no, no, no. the joists or the foundation part of your house, whatever you call what it. What she's trying to say is it was mainly cosmetic. Yes, it was, just, <laughs> it was just a big giant hole. Thank you. Are we getting subtitles, please? It was mainly cosmetic. <laughs> I was trying. I was waiting for you guys to like get the word. <laughs> I just remember um, calling my dad in a panic, like most girls do yeah. <laughs> when things happen like that. And um, thankfully, I work with a really awesome crew, and um, <laughs> I, I had connections with someone um, last year that was just really able to help me out. Came up, and they were able to repair it, and I think it got repaired half an hour before the appraiser yeah. came out. So that is probably I don't know the worst story. story ever. <laughs> It's a yeah. Worst case scenario. Yeah. It's a great example. It is. Of what not to do. Of what the agent job to group can do for you. Of what not to do. <laughs> and <laughs> so we are resourceful mm -hmm. and the appraiser never saw that, you know, her wall was blown out. It was repaired and you just saw the patch. <laughs> it was great. And her house came in just fine, as she said. So Things happen. Hopefully, um, you put your car in park, <laughs> and you don't drive in the wall into your. Hey, house. our fur babies are just like our babies. When yes. You're crying. <laughs> you just you <laughs> act about anything from this coffee corner episode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like you weren't hurt. I. It was terrifying. The only thing. The only thing that made. Me, <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that made me. Turn they just face. I know. <laughs> Well, if you know that, I think we should switch the subject back to appraisers. <laughs> anyway, it, Hi, came Jason. Out, it came out wonderful. And hey, Jason Henson. There was another Jason Henson uh, in the clubhouse. Right after you uh, left. Right after you left. And we were talking about you, your, your ears may have been burning. We happened to be at the uh, clubhouse in Scissor Tail today. If you remember last week, we were also in Scissor Tail at one of our listings on 86th Place, 4309 South 86th Place. We are taking offers on that house. It's beautiful, it's five bedrooms. Three bedrooms on the main level. Great big bonus. Four and a half baths. It's beautiful. Fireplace so, outside, right? Yeah, fireplace outside. It's, it's still cool enough to use it. It is. Yeah. And we have other options um, for sale in this neighborhood that the EJ Johnson Group at Keller Williams Market Pro Realty represents. If you are looking for something in the $400,000 range, we have those options with great amenities here in Scissor Tales. So again, we're talking about appraisals. So I guess, you know, your house comes in on appraisal as a seller and now your shoulders are down. Because that's the last big hurdle that you have to get through closing, right? Yeah, it is. Um, and then, you know, hopefully you've already started packing because more than likely your house is going to appraise just fine. Mm -hmm. It's just that, 
knowing that every the I has been dotted and the T is crossed. And, you know, it's just that sense of, okay, we can move on and just keep packing and we're going to move to our new house or mm -hmm. whatever we're getting ready to do. Maybe we're going to backpack through Europe and we're not buying another house. But don't do that <laughs> until after you close on your house. <laughs> yeah, right? Wouldn't that be fun, though? Mm -hmm. Do we know anyone that did that? Mm, yeah, I guess we did kind of, sort of, but anyways, so that's the, that's the process leading up to closing so far. Naomi, she's been keeping up, if you're doing a transaction with us, again, Naomi is handling the contract to close, so she is checking in with lenders, title, everybody throughout the process to make sure that things are moving along as they should mm -hmm. at the point of the transaction where we are. Mm -hmm. And there's no hiccups, things are cool. Mm -hmm. um, and she's very good at that. <laughs> so you see y'all just answer those emails. Those please just answer those. If you have your no red receipts <laughs> on, please turn them off. Yes, turn <laughs> off your red receipts, guys, because there's something, I don't know if there's anything worse than it saying red for three days. And Kind of waiting there for it. So <laughs> clearly, this does not bother her one bit. Um, so I don't know if anyone's popped in and has any questions. We're a little delayed over here, and I can't really see far over there. But I see that people are tuning in, and that is so exciting to see that folks are here. Um, I wanted to touch on just a couple other things while we're here together today. Uh, we are going to be having some great open houses this weekend. I think it, the weather is supposed to be okay, right? I don't know. I just can't keep up. It's is, this, is it supposed to be It's okay? probably going to be raining. The last time I looked, it was. So anyways, Sunday, we are going to have several houses open. One is in Liberty Bell, 5505 South 60th Place. It is a two it is gorgeous. Oh, that's the um, house that we came to um, when we were with Shelby. Um, so that gorgeous kitchen. Yeah. That gorgeous kitchen. Oh my! Those of you who fell in love with it, come look at it. Yeah, all heart services with floors downstairs, including the master. Huge. It was built master in 2017. 2017. So imagine they brand new. I mean, very well taken. And off of the the main entryway, there's a little office. Yeah. And that you go through to get to the bedroom. So you've got a little office area to turn to a little library study. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a really neat house. And then we are opening a house in Shadow Valley. We'll have several, three houses open in Shadow Valley. We have a larger home, um, five bedrooms, three and a half baths at 4805 Inglewood Road. And then we're going to have some of our new product in the garden homes open. It is built by Horton Homes. There will be two on Brookmere. So go past the clubhouse, take a right into the garden homes. And they're doing some amazing things yeah. in there. They, it looks nothing like what they've done before. Mm -hmm. it, they've been reborn. They have like a whole new fresh look and I cannot wait for all of you to see it. So proud of Todd and Dean Horton for real. One of the fireplace you should have pictured? Mm -hmm. Is that 5210 or 5208? So each picture represented how uh, each fireplace was going to look. Their fireplaces are going to be amazing. Yeah. I thought you were going to walk through those homes. I haven't seen you do. what they're doing. Yeah. yeah, and we have a couple coming soon in the garden homes. Also, we'll be listing one on Friday and again next Friday for another builder. So the garden homes, that product is uh, in the 350 range. Uh, all your main living is downstairs with your extra bedrooms and a flex room upstairs. And then last but not least, um, every second Sunday of the month, mm -hmm. Scissor Tail does a, a subdivision wide open house, and that is this Sunday. And always here in the clubhouse, Oh, it's next Sunday. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, sorry. At any rate, we will be here in detail. We will have three houses open. Uh, one on 86th Place, one on 86th Street, and one on Fly Picture. So come check us out. The builder will be here. EJ will be in the neighborhood. He'll be fielding questions for anyone. And then again next Sunday. Thank you, ma'am. <laughs> and they will be doing something fun for Easter. Um, what are they doing? Yeah. Exactly. They're painting Easter eggs. Um, the parents can come and do it with the kids. And it's a great way, like, 
If you're wanting to check out Scissor Tail, but you've got a couple of little ones in tow and you know that looking at houses is going to be exhausting, um, I have little kids. It's a great way to say, hey, if you're great, we go do this, then we get to go do something fun for you. Yeah, it's a fun thing to do on your way out of the neighborhood. So for sure, stop by. They, I think they always have some takeaways. Like Naomi said, they're going to be decorating eggs. They're going to be stuff. So yeah. Um, so if you guys have any questions for us, always feel free to check out our website at bjjohnsongroup.com. You can reach us at 479-877-0423. Um, this one right here. That's me. She will answer that phone. That's me. Like that. <laughs> um, so, you guys have anything else you want to share with our friends? I think That's it'd be, um, as much as we were talking about um, Lance Johnson and the houses that they have available in Scissor Tail, I think it's um, kind of snaps to them for since the last time we mentioned them, they've gone off their contract on three of their new construction homes. We yeah. have. Yeah, we've got some new people coming into the area, uh, transplants coming in from out of state. So mm -hmm. the market is teething up and it's exciting. Uh, we're boots on the ground every morning until late at night. And, you know, that late at night is late because the sun's going down later and later and you're being home and you're at nine o'clock. It's okay because the temperature is going up and up. <laughs> I, know, I know. Yeah, we're going to turn on AC for a long, but as long as the sun's out, it's not going to be so bad. But like I said last week, call me the one complaining about how hot it is. Oh my gosh. Faster than anyone. I'm going to turn the air up a little bit. I was like, no! <laughs> and then we got here and it was so hot in here, and then we turned on the air and then I had to put the laser on because it was cold. So. Mm -hmm. And I think it's also um, a good thing to mention. We mentioned it back in January, um, but another and uh, during one of your giveaway videos, I think yeah. you're doing. But um, it's April. It's the new quarter, so you should change your air filters. Oh, oh yes. Man. Oh y'all, cannot tell you how important this is. Holy cow! I mean, it makes for some great pictures that you send me, but change them. And if you have a pet, do that monthly. I have to. Yeah. You have two pets. Well, one of them doesn't shed, but the other one really. No, he's I thought poodles were the only thing that didn't shed. He's a poodle. He is. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> okay. um, yes, change your air filters. Good one. Yes, so important for the health and the life of your HVAC system. So, all right. Well, we're going to go back to work, sell some more houses, help some more buyers. And if you guys come up with any questions, feel free to reach out to us at any time. And we appreciate you coming and hanging out with us today. And we will see you. We'll be back next week, right? Yeah. And if you're kind of on that line about whether you want to list your house, call Alexander or Paige. Yeah. Because um, you don't want to miss the influx that we've got going on right now. Oh, my gosh. What happens? Real quick, though, what happened last week when you listed... Um, those two houses that we listed? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, we had a couple houses go pretty fast. They were in great price point, and um, our sellers are super happy, and things are clicking along, and um, we're really excited when that happens, and everyone's super happy. So, like I said, the market is warming up. If you would like to talk about what your home uh, is valued at, what the market says about your house, please call me. You can call 479-877-0423, or you can call me direct at 479-871-1030. But anyways, thank you so much, guys, for joining us today. It's always a pleasure to chat with you, and it's kind of a nice way just to disconnect from, I don't know, running around, just sit here for a second. So, and to connect with you guys a little bit. Yeah, thanks a bunch. See you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.